Which Five years ago, I infiltrated Greater Manchester Police to investigate racism. What I found really did shock the nation. A dog was born in a barn is still a dog. A packy born in Britain is still a packy. He's a packy, I'm stopping him. Because I'm English. <laughs> I class them as one thing and that's it. Packies. As a result of my film, 10 officers from three different forces were forced to resign, a further 12 were disciplined, and three police trainers were removed. I felt physically sick as I watched The Secret Policeman last night, and I suspect some of you did. Well, I think what's been revealed is horrendous. I think that the issue now is not how this was done, but what we can do. The Commission for Racial Equality launched a formal inquiry after my investigation. It found racism was still at the core of the police and made 125 recommendations for change. The service promised it would root out racism and, crucially, make itself more representative of the communities it policed. Five years on, I want to know if those promises have been kept. Nobody needs a secret camera to uncover the racial divisions in Britain's biggest force today. They're on public view, damaging its credibility and contributing to the mayor's decision to dispense with its leader. Many have questioned whether these scenes don't owe more to office politics and personal ambition than out-and-out -out racism. Tarek Gafur is the third most senior cop in the Metropolitan Police Service. How could he be the victim of discrimination? My current case is essentially to do with my treatment at the highest levels of the Met in particular, the discrimination that I have been subjected to over a long period by the present commissioner, Sir Ian Blair. It is to do with the continuation of that treatment into the very important job I was doing as the coordinator for the security and safety of the 2012 Olympics. Tariq Gafur's allegations of racism were met head on by the forces second in command and he gave his colleague both barrels. I think it's long past time that we all shut up, stop making public statements about private disputes and get on with the job that we are all paid to do. Thank you. The Mets number two telling the number three to shut it is unprecedented. But could the circus around the Mets dirty linen actually be a distraction from a much bigger story? A story from grassroots officers, which suggests the police service still has a major problem with racism. I wanted to ask the people who know. The only way we could do that was through the Black Police Association, which represents black and minority ethnic, or BME, officers and staff. So we sent out a survey to a thousand of its members whom we took care to randomly select ourselves from eight of Britain's largest forces. We received more than 360 responses. We asked direct questions and also offered a chance to tell us what it's like to be BME and in the police. We're just looking through the first 200 or so of these questionnaires and I simply can't believe what I'm reading. That in 2008, the situation in, in the police service could be so bad. This person in particular refers to being treated like a slave. And looking at these questionnaires, looking at these experiences, we could be right back in the 60s, it's incredible. The police do not care about racism in the police. The diversity training courses they implement are not taken seriously by those receiving the training. I've been treated worse than my parents in the 60s. It's all very well hidden, no racist words. You're just never good enough for promotion. Racism is still very much alive and well in the police service. Many white officers will not even acknowledge a black officer at times, and you're made to feel that you're not welcome in the police service. We asked if they felt they had experienced racism at work. Almost three quarters of respondents said they had. On the face of it, this was disturbing, but I needed to find out more. 
I started talking to my old contacts again and soon came across something that was chillingly reminiscent of my time in the police. This was Ku Klux Klan fanatic PC Rob Pooling's idea of how to rid the police of Asians. Surely this kind of blatant racism had been left behind. Well, no actually. I've been told about an incident which took place just a few weeks ago. Two Asian British transport police sergeants came to their work at their station in Stockwell in London and found the Ku Klux Klan emblem and other racist abuse scraped into their lockers. Only other officers and police staff could have had access to this locker room. The victims were too upset to speak openly about it, but one has requested a transfer. British Transport Police said a major investigation was underway and promised to find the culprit. But although this type of overt racism is extremely distressing for those involved, what many BME officers are saying is that racism in the police has moved on. It's more discreet and has gone underground. Racism still exists, but indirectly, in a stealth way. In my opinion, all that's happened is that people have become more careful of what they say in front of other BME staff and officers. So how can we test this theory that racism has gone under the radar? Well, we have to put together the overall picture of what's happening with black and minority ethnic cops. And the first thing to do is to see if the service has kept its promise to recruit more of them. Back when I joined, there was only one in an intake of 120. Today, the police is still struggling to make itself more representative of the community it polices. It was set targets almost 10 years ago by McPherson's inquiry into the Stephen Lawrence case. Most forces, including the Met, have doubled BME numbers, but that's still far short of the target they were set. My old force, Greater Manchester, was set a target of 7% of officers being BME. It achieved 4. West Midlands should have recruited 16%. It only achieved 7 and the Met was set a target of 25%. So far, the BME rate is 8%. And when we asked the Home Office about these missed targets, it said it was dropping them next year and allowing individual forces to set their own. It looked like a total failure to achieve a key part of McPherson's recommendations. We needed an explanation. Steve Otter speaks for all English and Welsh forces on diversity. At the time, these targets were thought to be realistic. They were accepted by the Home Office and you've had 10 years. You've just failed, haven't you? Well, I don't think we've failed in that sense. I think what you will see inside police forces is a real change in the makeup <coughs> of the police force. It's not enough. We accept across England and Wales that we need to do more. Um, and as I said, that uh, what we're finding is that intakes of officers, I mean, for example, the Met, it's about a quarter now, are from black and minority ethnic communities. Is making the police service representative of the community that it polices an achievable and realistic goal? I think it is. I think that it has to be representative in all sorts of ways, though. Uh, not just black and minority, minority ethnic people, but women as well, people who are disabled, and so on. So if this is an achievable goal, when will you have achieved it by? Well, to be honest, I can't say. Um, I think that's too difficult. I saw firsthand how hard it could be for outnumbered BME officers. The only one in my intake was singled out by PC pulling. To eradicate the whole country, people like him. <clears throat> no, if I don't get that highlight, my I wondered how many BME cops were still coming up against attitudes like this. We do know that if you're black, you are twice as likely to drop out in your first six months. If they make it past that stage, BMEs are almost as likely as their white colleagues to stay in the job. But many of those who do stick it out 
complain they feel held back.